Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Pre-Market News and Views by In The Money Stocks. Today is Thursday, March 13, 2014. Thank you all for tuning in. Let's jump right into the charts. We're going to start off the usual S&P 500 E-mini futures. You'll see that the futures are trading higher by about four points at the moment. They were a little bit lower around four o'clock in the morning, but you know what happened. I don't have to probably tell you by now. Uh, dollar yen caught a little bit of a bid. Notice dollar yen, four o'clock in the morning, catches that bid. Markets ramp right back up. If you take a look at the dollar yen uh, just a few minutes ago, they caught that big, big pop. Markets ramp back up. If the dollar yen starts to come back down and slide lower, I expect we're going to see what? The futures start to slide lower. That's the way it works. Watch the dollar yen chart. This relationship will, will not last forever, but it's been working for over a year now, so you want to keep note of it. All right, let's take a look at a few other things out here. Uh, looks like there was some weak economic data out of China last night. I don't know if we want to make too much out of it. We already know that that's been pretty weak overall. It looks like, though, the Shanghai did catch a bid last night up about 1%. The Nikkei 225 index was basically flat, down one-tenth of 1%. The Hang Seng entering bear market territory, that was down about six-tenths of 1%. So uh, any way you slice it or dice it, the market's definitely looking a little bit on the on the, uh, the, the flat type side today. So uh, I don't know really if we can make too much out of it. European markets are flat across the board with the exception of the Milan market, Italy, the FTSE MIB. That is up about seven tenths of 1%, but the German DAX is basically flat. FTSE 100, which is England, they can print their own money. They are down about a quarter of 1%. So I don't know if we could really judge uh, the markets looking at the uh, European uh, equities or the European stock market indexes today. But um, nonetheless, we just had uh, weekly jobless claims. It looks like jobless claims came in at 315,000. That's a three month low. Um, I don't know if that's really going to help the market. I think jobless claims, uh, I don't even know how many people pay attention to them anymore or, or believe them or even believe the unemployment report. So uh, again, we'll just watch this and see how this plays out. But there are some stocks in the news. Um, the first one we're going to start off with today. Uh, we're going to go with uh, William Sonoma, WSM. Okay, so this one uh, reported earnings. I believe numbers are better than expected. This is a new all-time high for the stock. Now, the stock is overbought already, but it's a very, very, sometimes it's a pretty light volume stock, so I guess it could shoot higher. The only resistance level I'm seeing right here would be around $67. I don't know if it's going to get up there. I don't even expect it to get up there. But if it does, that would be your resistance point for today. So there's really not much we could do with this one. Krispy Kreme Donuts, KKD, uh, they reported earnings too. Uh, they're moving on, uh, sharply higher. Stock closed at $19.88, trading at $21.84. So that was a pretty good move. I will have resistance levels for this one. So we will be looking to play this on a gap play today in the chat room. They will be posted up at 9 o'clock in the morning. So again, we're going to watch Krispy Kreme. Next stock on uh, the list here is Herbalife. HLF is the ticker symbol. Yesterday, it looked like uh, Herbalife received some news. Stock was halted for a fair part of the day before reopening lower. Uh, looks like they received some news that there's going to be an FTC investigation. Um, what could you say? Stock caught a really good bounce off the lows, rallied up. It's still simmering right around this 60.50 level, $60.50 that is. I'm not sure I could make much out of it at this range. There's still a lot of support around the $54 area. If it were to fall on the upside, I suppose the stock could get to, well, it's so far away. I'm not even going to say it. So um, you got a pretty good resistance level around 68 but there's not much I see here, but keep this on the radar because any more news comes out of it, it could be uh, a volatile name and could be a good day trading equity. Yesterday it was. Uh, the next one we're going to look at is Dollar General. Ticker symbol is DG. And what you're going to see here is that uh, the stock's been all over the map. Closed, I believe, yesterday at 59.30. It traded down to around 56, then rebounded all the way back up. Right now it's trading at 57.80. Um, the only level I really see worthy here for Dollar General is going to be around the $54 area. If this stock gets down to around 54 I think there could be a bounce play there. Until then, there's nothing I want to do with it. In sympathy to Dollar General, you could see some action in DLTR, which is Dollar Tree. Also, Family Dollar, which is FDO. These are all in the same category, although they're not really moving much. So, 
um, but you could see some volatility and sympathy to Dollar General if Dollar General starts to slide. Again, the only level I'm seeing for Dollar General would be $54. You can take it as a scalp bounce there. Remember, a scalp is nothing more than a quick day trade, usually about 10 to 30 minutes. Um, but we would look at Dollar General for a scalp play around the 54 level. Uh, the next one I have on my list is GoGo. I'm not sure exactly what the news was here, but I did um, see it earlier. But um, <clears throat> this stock is making a pretty good little bounce today. It closed at 23.88. It's now trading at 25.43. Did trade above 26. Um, so we'll see where this one plays out. I will have levels for this in the in the uh, in the um, intraday stock chat. That'll be posted up at nine o'clock in the morning. So keep your eyes peeled for that one. Um, the next equity I want to look at today um, is going to be this Plug Power. Okay, the ticker symbol is PLUG, and um, I know these things have really been on a roller coaster ride. You could see. Um, recently, the stock traded above the uh, almost the twelve dollars, then came crashing down, settling in right now around the seven dollar and fifty cent level. Um, be careful with this one. This one is uh, we traded this one yesterday in the, the the chat room for a really for a tremendous gain. Now that today we're going to watch this one again and see if it gives us any extreme moves, and we'll look to play it. But um, this is actually, even though it's a single-digit stock, only trading around $7.58, it's actually been a really good day trading vehicle recently. So um, there are no levels that I'm seeing all outright right now. Uh, but once the stock opens, I'm sure we're going to have some levels for plug power this morning in the intraday stock chat. So we'll keep that on the radar as well. In sympathy to plug, um, the other one is uh, Ballard Power. I believe that's another one. Uh, BLDP is the ticker symbol on that one. So you can take a look at this one. This would be in the same boat. Right now it's trading at 583. It closed at 536. Still a ton of resistance around 623 on Ballard. So if it gets up there, that could be a fade play on Ballard. But um, again, these stocks are very, very volatile. You got to know what you're doing. And again, watch them once they open up. The story could change a little bit as they open. Um, and the other one is actually Fuel Cell. This is all three of these stocks in the same category. But um, Fuel Cell looks like it has very, very little upside from here. But um, we'll watch these stocks today. They've been actually pretty good day trading vehicles. All right, we're going to move on to gold this morning. Gold is trading down about $5. We'll take a look at the popular GLD. Spot gold right now is at 1365.30 an ounce. The GLD is trading uh, 131.58. It closed yesterday at 131.76. So. You can see that it's reflecting that little five-point drop right now. But um, any way you slice it or dice it, gold hold, is holding up very, very well at the moment. I don't, really don't see any uh, major problems with gold, at, at least not yet. Um, it's holding up very, very well on the chart. So we'll see where it goes a little bit later. Light Sweet Crude is catching a bid today. It's up about 18 cents from yesterday's collapse um, to $98.17. We'll go to the USO, which is a good way. Good proxy for trading light sweet crude. And what you'll see here is that it's trading at $35.30. Um, we'll see if this level can hold around here. 35.20 was yesterday's support level. The next level I have for uh, the USO would be around 34.50. 34.50 should give you a bounce. So if it does trade down there, um, we'll see if it does go lower. But I like that 34.50 level for a bounce in the USO if it does get down to that area. All right. So. I think that's pretty much everything. Looking at the futures again, they're up three and a half points at the moment. Again, watch that dollar yen chart. It's going to tell you a lot. It's going to tell you everything you need to know. Right now, dollar yen is still down 13 cents on the day, but it's well off the lows, and that's really what lifts the stock market. When dollar yen goes up, stock market goes up, and gold goes down, and vice versa. With that said, everybody, I want to wish you all a great trading day, and we'll see you on the charts. Take care now.